Here on Hearing Tracker, we don't just talk about traditional hearing aids. I look at my role as keeping you up to date with any new hearing tech, ranging from promising startups to those that have been around for a number of years. Today, I'll be covering the exciting new Jabra Enhanced Plus hearing aid and whether or not it's something that you should consider to manage your hearing loss. If you're keen on keeping up to date with the latest news in the hearing technology world, then make sure that you subscribe to this channel hit that grey notifications bell and you'll be updated every time we release a new video. Coming in at $799, Jabra released their Enhanced Plus hearing aid at the end of February this year in the US. And I was very lucky to have gotten my hands on them nice and early. Since then, I've put all of my thoughts down in one place on both the physical attributes, features, and how these devices perform. For those of you that don't already know Jabra, they specialize in audio equipment from wireless headphones to video conferencing setups. And with their parent company being the GN Group based in Denmark, who have been around for a century and a half and specialize in all things hearing, you would hope that they would know a thing or two about helping those with hearing loss. Jabra are boasting that they've combined their knowledge from both GN Audio and the GN Hearing Division to make a device that's well designed for situational use. And they use the term situational use a lot in their PR, which I'll come into why that's important later on. This device falls somewhere between a hearing aid and an earbud and is designed to enhance your life with conversations, phone calls and streaming music. The natural synergy between the two brands means that Jabra have also utilized features previously only found in GN Resound hearing aids. And when we take a look under the hood later, I'll go into a little bit more detail on those specific features. The devices have been purposefully released under the Jabra headphone brand rather than the Resound hearing aid brand, as GN are hoping that this takes away some of the stigma associated with hearing aid use and is trying to make them cool and as Jabber is far better known than ReSound, I guess that they're hoping that it helps them to position themselves better in the hearing aid market. I can understand exactly why they've done this, especially given the brand awareness of the two different companies, as you can see when we compare the two in Google Trends here. But at the same time, I personally think that there are pros and cons with this strategy, as the only way that they're going to grow awareness of their hearing aid brand is by actually doing the opposite and bringing out some cutting edge monumental products that span both the hearing aid and earbud world under the ReSound brand, such as what Signia have done with their Signia Active Pros, for example. Jabra are promising three things from their Impart Plus hearing aids, conversations, music, and calls. And I'll go into more detail on each of these subjects once we've looked inside. Opening up the box here, you'll see instructions on downloading the app and pairing the Jabras with your smartphone. And I'll run into this process with you later on in today's video. They're currently only made for iPhone with no sign of an Android version just yet. If you have an iPhone 11, then you'll have access to all of the features of the Jabras. They are compatible with older iPhones going back to the iPhone 6. However, you would lose the hands-free calling feature. The devices themselves come in a neat case, which is about the same size of an AirPod Pro case. It feels nice and solid. And the first thing to note is that it doesn't scream hearing aids. These are designed for those with a mild to moderate hearing loss and are available in two different colors, both black and gold. And I happen to have been sent a sleek black pair to show you now. The left and the right each have their own station for charging with a magnet that pulls them neatly into place. Here in the center, you can see the charging case, battery status LED, and a small LED on the back to indicate when the case itself is charging. The case is powered by a USB-C port with the cable for it also being included in the box. It doesn't come with a mains plug to go in the wall, which I guess follows a move from Apple a couple of years ago or so to try and reduce packaging sizes and therefore the impact that transporting their products has on the environment. The box also comes with three different ear gel sizes with the mediums pre-installed on the devices in the box. These will need changing roughly once every four to six months. Now taking them out of the case for the first time, my first observation is, wow, they're super light. At only 3.3 grams each, there's nothing to them in terms of weight, which from a comfort perspective is exactly what you want in your ear. But at the same time, they do feel solid and of a decent build quality. The outward facing side has the Jabra branding, which is engraved on the multifunction button. Its purposes are limited to controlling the volume, muting the microphones and answering the phone. It doesn't have any media features, however, as you'd normally get with any other earbuds, such as the ability to stop and start music, which is a bit of a shame. 
The multifunction button also has an LED inside, which neatly lights up to tell you the charging status and if there are any issues with the devices. These super important pieces of hardware are two microphones that you can see here, and it's great that they've managed to space them this far apart. The further away from each other they are, the better when it comes to directionality and helping these hearing aids to work in background noise, using their directional beamforming to pick up what's directly in front of the user and try and cut out the peripheral sounds. The chip itself has four great features from GN Hearing, using some of the same advanced technology that GN Hearing Aids are known for. First of all, the warp compressor feature means that sounds are analyzed with a resolution similar to that of the human ear for a natural sound quality. The digital noise reduction improves listening comfort for both stationary and impact noises, whilst aiming to keep speech as clear as possible. Then in noise, an appropriate level of noise attenuation is automatically applied based on the user's environment. The digital feedback suppression is maintained with two control systems, preventing the tech from whistling. And the final piece of shared technology is their binaural beamformer, which provides directionality with an ultra narrow beam, isolating sounds coming from in front so you can hear clearly in more noisy listening environments. One thing to note is that I do think it's interesting that they've chosen to go with a popular earbud style instead of a classic earphone style, such as with AirPods. The reason that I mention this is that if Jabra are serious about being used to enhance people's hearing and to appeal to the masses, then they must understand that the downside of this means that they're more likely to completely block your ears and therefore for the user to experience what we call the occlusion effect. Typically with an age related hearing loss, the user would have good hearing in the low tones and want to keep the ear canals as open as possible for a more natural way of listening. My worry is that it will feel like you've got your fingers stuck in your ears and may not be the most comfortable for when you're speaking or eating, with the effect being that you'll be able to really feel your own voice booming and trapped inside your head. There's the potential that this will significantly limit those that will benefit from wearing the Enhanced Pluses. To counter that, there are a couple of benefits of wearing hearing aids that do occlude your ears a little bit more. First of all, if the ears are completely occluded, then it can result in better hearing and background noise, as all of the sound that reaches your eardrum is being channeled through the hearing aid, and the hearing aid can clean up the signal. Whereas with a loosely fitting tip, there may be sound creeping through, which the hearing aid hasn't cleaned up, and therefore could make it more challenging to hear in a noisy environment. The second benefit of more occluded ear canals comes down to the sound reproduction when streaming. As the tighter the fitting, the better the bass response you'll get. So the sound in theory should have more fullness, richness and depth to it. The battery life is rated at 10 hours on a single charge and 30 hours with the charging case. Compared to a set of Apple AirPod Pros, that's pretty awesome as a full charge on them will really only give you four and a half hours of listening time. I do think that the disappointing factor here, however, is that if you adopt these as hearing aids, of course, if you start wearing them at eight o'clock in the morning, you don't want them to be dead by six in the afternoon. Whereas any actual digital hearing aid that's out there at the moment will give you around 24 hours of battery life for a three hour charge, including those currently made by GN Resound. I'm not exactly sure why Jabra have done this as it's kind of an obvious thing for me to get right from the beginning. However, saying that, I also reviewed Olive Union's Olive Pro OTC devices a few months back, and their battery life was only seven hours. I mean, come on guys, if you want to play with the big dogs, then you've got to get the basics right. I do think, however, that Jabra think they've got it right, as this is where the situational use that Jabra talk about comes into play, and maybe they're not designed to be used all the time. I guess Jabra's idea behind these devices is for them to be used as and when you need them, which it's kind of everything against we're taught in audiology, with rehab and commitment to wearing hearing aids being crucial for them being a success. That's why any audiologist, ENT or general practitioner will tell you to wear your hearing aids as often as possible for maximum benefit. Very simply, this just helps the brain to retrain to get used to a new way of processing information. It's way different to putting on a pair of reading glasses and all of a sudden being able to read. There's a lot more commitment and time necessary for acclimatization. So the big question is, where can you get these devices and how do you personalize them? The Enhanced Plus is currently only available in the US and Japan, and it's Jabra's first venture into the direct-to-consumer or over-the-counter device world. However, there is a bit of a twist. They're not quite direct-to-consumer just yet. 
The world of direct-to-consumer and over-the-counter devices is still in its birth, and because there are no real case studies on how these products will work in practice, plus the FDA still have strict rules on the dispensing of hearing aids, Jabra have erred on the side of caution and incorporated audiologists within the fitting process. They've also been quite clever. The current path to getting your hands on these devices is via their certified Jabra Enhanced Centres the majority of which are bell-toned, the national hearing aid retailers who currently have over 1,500 practices across North America. And you guessed it, bell share the same parent company as Jabra, the GN Group. Well done, GN. Well done. I'm currently informed that their availability won't be limited to Beltone, however, and they'll also be available via independent audiology practices across the US. Scrolling through the Beltone website, the Enhanced Pluses are listed at $799, but you can't buy them without the Bellcare Plus package. With this being a further $199, taking the cost up to $998. This includes a hearing assessment, which is currently required if any product is sold as a hearing aid. Whilst there is a little bit of concern in the audiology world about what OTC devices mean for the future of audiology, I am personally super excited by this new wave of technology coming through, as long as it's done right. The NIDCD report that less than 30% of adults over 70 with a hearing loss have actually tried a hearing aid. And my view is that if these devices give easier access, remove the stigma associated with hearing loss and encourage that group of people to wear some form of hearing aid, then there's a huge potential for more people looking after their ears. There is one small issue that I have with these OTC devices though, and of course, that's because I think that the role of an audiologist is super important. And I do think that Jabra have overcome this by involving an audiologist in the process. Hit me out for a second. So these hearing aids are designed for people with a mild to moderate hearing loss. Unless you've seen an audiologist, how do you know that you've got a mild to moderate hearing loss? How do you know that you've not just got a temporary hearing loss and with a trip to the doctor, it could be remedied? Or how do you know that it's not something more sinister that requires urgent intervention, such as this extensive list of ear diseases? How do you know that it's not just earwax? There is way more that audiologists look for in a hearing assessment appointment than simply performing a hearing test. So I'm super pleased that Jabra have looked at a way of ensuring that these patients will still be assessed for any referable conditions. The setup process was fairly straightforward as the app runs through everything with you, giving clear instructions as you go. The only point in which it got a little annoying was halfway through, the app asked me to pair with the made for iPhone Bluetooth settings on the phone, which had me jump out of the app to do this. It's simple enough, but adds a little bit of clunkiness to the process. As soon as they're paired to your phone, it's straight down to business with the personalization process. I love the fact that the hearing aids assessed the environment to see if it's quiet enough to do the hearing test and then presented me with a series of warble tones sounding like this to assess my hearing. The test took around four minutes in total and is designed to replace the traditional pure tone audiogram performed by your audiologist in clinic. Normally in clinic, we perform at least an eight point audiogram to assess someone's hearing using both air conduction and bone conduction. So there's no real comparison to a full audiological assessment. However, I much prefer this setup to the likes of the Bose sound control setup process. Another really neat point is that at one point during the personalization process, someone even decided to hoover in the room next to me and the Jabras detected that there was too much noise present and canceled the testing. So I love that they've taken this to the point that they're looking out for ideal testing situations to ensure the accuracy of the assessment of your hearing. I mean, it's kind of a given that you need to make sure that the testing conditions are spot on as this sets up the gain that the hearing aids are going to be providing to compensate for any hearing loss that you have. And if your environment is too noisy when you do the testing, it will end up giving you more gain than is necessary to overcome your hearing loss. And technically, you'll be over amplifying the world around you. As soon as the testing is done, then you're good to go. One thing that I would have liked to have seen were the results at the end of the test, but it doesn't give you that option. Now back to the three things that Jabra are advertising with the Enhanced Pluses. Enhanced conversations, musics, and calls. Reviewing this and looking at the enhanced conversations, it's always a hard one for me to comment on with the quality of sound when it comes to hearing aids, as I don't have a hearing loss. So my aim with these reviews is to fill you all in on the tech specs and features. To be honest, even if I did have a hearing loss, it would still be really difficult for me to comment on the quality of sound of any hearing aids, as there are so many different factors that come into play, ranging from the level of hearing loss to how the hearing aids are actually programmed. So we'd kind of be comparing apples and pears. 
I was still able to try them out and demo the various features. And the speech filter definitely makes a difference to the sound for both speech and stream sound. Going from full, which adds more depth and bass to the sound, to clear, which adds more treble and definition. And I really like that this doesn't just apply to speech, but also to any media streaming through as well. There are also three active listen modes to choose from when wearing them as hearing aids. Adaptive mode, which is designed to enhance speech and sounds based on your surroundings and the conversations around you. If there's no background noise, it should sound quite natural. However, in noise, this mode should lower the volume of your surroundings to enable you to hear the person talking in front of you. The focus mode enhances speech in a narrow zone directly in front of you, which utilizes those directional microphones that I was talking about before. And is a feature that we would traditionally only see in hearing aids, but we're starting to see these slowly creeping into the OTC market now. And finally, the surround mode, which is designed to pick up sounds from all directions. Enhancement number two is the music streaming feature. So when I tried streaming music from my phone to the hearing aids, I'm afraid to say that it was a little disappointing, as I wasn't as impressed as I would have hoped to have been based on Jabra's reputation. So despite my ears being fully occluded using the ear gel, so a really nice fit, I still found that the bass was really lacking. The sound was just over compressed and flat, and the range just seemed limited, and there wasn't very much detail. So yes, they did a job, but definitely not $998 worth of a job. Comparing them to the likes of my over-the-ear Bowers and Wilkins headphones or even AirPod Pros, I mean, there just wasn't any comparison. Perhaps the lack of detail is down to the headphones using the low-energy form of Bluetooth. Or maybe my expectations are just too high. If they were to use classic Bluetooth, which manufacturers such as Phonak or Unitron do, then this would hinder that 10-hour battery life even further. But would that result in better streaming quality? I don't know. If I were to compare this streaming quality to that of other hearing aids, however, it's kind of on par with how they sound with music too, which is also not great. The challenge is that hearing aids aren't designed for this. The hearing aids, and yes, they're designed for speech and phone calls, but they happen to also be able to stream audio too. So naturally, one would start to listen to them for music. The issue that I have here is that Jabra are boasting that this is something that these devices should be good at. And I think that they've let themselves down here. So don't get your hopes up too high. Enhancement number three is for phone calls. So to use these devices on the phone or listening to the radio, yeah, they were all right. But then the occlusion effect soon caught up with me and made listening harder when I was talking on the phone as I just felt like I got my fingers stuck in my ears whilst I was talking. So the big question is, do I think that they're worth the hype? When prepping for this video, I watched an online interview from Jite Abo, CEO of GN Hearing, discussing the launch of the Enhanced Pluses, which is worth a watch. And here's a small extract. So again, I mean, uh, Jabra Enhanced Plus is a combination between uh, an earbud and the hearing aid. And it is the optimal combination, but it's not the best earbud we make and it's not the best hearing aid we make. So clearly it does not compare, for instance, to Resound One, which is uh, obviously designed for full day use and can cover, you know, from uh, mild to more profound hearing loss. This is a, situ a device that you use in certain situations, for, exam for example, the dinner party where you are struggling to hear everybody around the table. In my opinion, I think that they're trying very hard at being good at two different things, but I think that they've achieved neither. Whilst I'm desperate for something to come out that will fill this void and help those with an unmanaged hearing loss that are not keen on wearing hearing aids, I'm still split as to whether or not this is the right solution. I really hope that those providing the Enhanced Pluses offer trial periods as is standard with traditional hearing aids so that you can really put them through their paces in the situations that you struggle with before committing to them. If you've tried them, I would absolutely love to hear your feedback in the comments to this video. So I hope that you found this video useful, guys. If you liked it, please hit like. If you have any questions, then make sure you drop them in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And if you haven't subscribed yet, then make sure you do so. I'll see you in the next video.